let's I'm just kind of processing everything it's everything you said and so I'm many sure. deep, so many deep things you, talk, you, you, you mentioned um i want to go back to p2b for a second the reason why I, why I want to go back to him is obviously with everything happening his election his campaign and there was this characterization, characterization of p2b as this sense as this godly figure as this the best governor in anambra states i'm an anambrian just like you are <laughs> I know Anambra State very well. I live, I live in, I live in Anambra State when he was governor of the state for eight years, and I know firsthand that, unlike they claim, he's not the best. And like you rightly said, it was under him that you had the fifty dead bodies floating in the river in Ezu River, like you mentioned. Obedience, they keep quiet about it, and I always bring it up to obedience whenever we have this argument about Nigeria. And I always point them to this case of the Ezu River and the fact that under James Walfo, 50 young men were, were killed. Their bodies were taken to that river, dumped in the river. And I hate to say this, and this is just me coming from, I, I love the military, I love, this, I love intelligence, and I love going to those kind of theories and those kinds of things and normally when you when when they kill people right there's a way to get rid of the body in a way whereby you will have any backlash or you know to be like you you, you will see the body but SARS we are so ineffective and so inefficient and I'm sorry to use this example but I'm getting somewhere with it there they were so bad at their job that they killed these young men they took them to the river they didn't even get rid of the bodies properly and then in the morning, I remember, I remember when that happened because it was all over the news in Anambra states that suddenly bodies were floating in a river. 50 dead bodies of young men. And for me, it's like, it's wrong for you to have killed them. But in second place, it's also wrong for you to have dumped their bodies in the river. And in third place as well, you dump their bodies in the river, the family is comfort is com comes to see them and sees their body that in that way. When I saw my dad last year when he passed, I remember going into, I couldn't even go into the mortuary. I was, if, at first I was like, I was scared, my first time. And I saw one of the courage walk in. I saw him on the floor. And I remember talking to my friend this morning, I was like, that image can never leave my head. In Western societies, you put the dead body in the freezer, in the fridge, right? You come in, you bring down the dead body, you see your family member. By walking into the mortuary, my dad is on the floor. Is it's not something that should happen. So I put myself in, 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 the, in the shoes of the parents going to Ezu River like your dad went and seeing their 20-year-old boy. Your, your dad, didn't, your dad didn't, doesn't, didn't even see him, but let's just yeah. imagine the parent that now saw his body, mm -hmm. the body of the son or the daughter. Or daughter they were all boys, sorry. Seeing them in that condition, bloated, I know this, this is very graphic, but when you think about it, I'm like, you cannot not hold people to be responsible. It's not possible. You cannot, you cannot as, as an obedient, tell me that Peter B did not act. Even if he didn't do anything, his, his inactions alone speak louder than words. The fact that he did nothing, he didn't call a press conference. He did. He did, okay, he called a press conference. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Peter B was, not, he was he, not in the country when Okay, the you didn't you didn't found. ask for you didn't ask for He's, the um I'm sorry to cut you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. First thing, I am obviously non partisan. I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't root for any politician. I think they yeah. are all evil. Every one of them. I think that they have once you become once you attain the height of an elite, you're no longer on my side. <laughs> Maybe my friends are right to say I'm a comrade, but yeah, sure. Mm. But like what I'm saying is P2B did call for a press conference. Uh, he was not in Nigeria. He was out of the country when he happened. When he heard it, he came back. His um, chief of staff, Oseleka Obazi, went there. No, 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 no. no. Uh, is it not Oseleka? No, I think the mistake. He didn't. He was in the press. That's the point I'm making. He, like, he, did, he, he was he, in the. He, he did it. was in the press conference. He did a press okay, conference. okay. He even called for an investigation, final okay. investigation into it. Uh, but P2B. Um, the panel did not give a report on yeah. P2B until P2B um, left office. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, this is a, a case of people's deaths. Yeah. 
and he didn't push yeah, exactly. for the report to be faster, for the investigation to be faster, yeah. to give a report on it. it. The report did not come until, I think sometime in 2014. And Pete Obi left in yeah, 2013. Left, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And, um, and so you begin to wonder, well, like, was it lip service? I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I can't say. He, he can say that he had done his best. But what does your best look like? What does your best look like? Amnesty International had a report on that on that um, incident, that gory incident. Why didn't you act on their report? You know. And when would Pito be like have the guts to call out the Nigerian police? That's my own like. I don't have any problem with him as a person. I just have a problem with his lack of spine when it comes to the police. Which then begins to look like guilt to me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because why are you not calling these people out exactly. for what they are? Yeah. Why are you not speaking out and saying yeah. like what they did while you were the governor? Yeah. You can't do anything because you were the governor. But now, as as an average citizen, you are asking for an investigation to be called mm. and all of that. Why are you not doing that? I, I why think, are yeah. you not using your assets, your exactly. platform? Yeah to do something. Mm. I don't care about obedience or non-obedience or whatever. I think that Pete Obi was, the, uh, was actually like sound when it came to mm. which of the three candidates, top three candidates. No, of course, yeah. That's, yeah he was sound. Course, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that he could have been a yeah. good president. I just was scared of him becoming the president and things like this happening and him not doing anything and, and that's, as usual. Yeah, and, that's, and that was my issue. I, told, I said this obedience. My critique of Peter when it comes to this issue is that but eventually he becomes president. We want you to know, sir, that what you did as governor or what you did not do when it comes to NSAS or SARS, the Ezu River killings, at least that's a loan we make sure that when you become president or if you become president, you will ensure that that did not happen again. What yeah. about, and, and, and also, that was also like some of the reasons why I wanted him to win. Mm. In some ways, when, when people ask me, if, if push comes to show, who would you want to win? Mm. I said, and they're like, oh, but he was there. He, oh, he oversaw what happened with your brother. And I said, yeah. But his excuse has always been that he couldn't do anything as, yeah. pre, as the governor of Anambra State. Yeah. But then he would be becoming the president yeah. of Nigeria. No excuse, no. Having access to the police fully. 100%. So what would he be doing then? Would he then try to right his wrongs but you see the funny thing is that i don't think that anybody needs to be the president to do something about yeah. this you have access in fact if Peter B decides to have, seek audience with tinubu today he would he will grant him audience why is he not using his platform why are our politicians not just Peter B, Atiku, for example has been in the corridors of power for as long as possible he's a very powerful man Atiku. Abubakar, a very, very powerful man. If Atiku decides to speak and say that he expects an investigation or whatever, or whatever, and he asks PDP legislators to push for it, they have the numbers. They have the numbers. For once in our lives, can our legislators grow a spine and do the right thing? Can these people who have the platform grow a spine? No, they don't. They can't because they benefit from the evil of the police. Yeah, the collusion with them. Exactly, they are in collusion. If they yeah. call out the police, you might see skeletons in everybody's yeah, yeah. cupboard. Course, yeah. So course, everybody yeah. wants, oh, it's not me that said, it's not me that said, it's not me that did, it's not me that, and so they will write uh, press statements over and over again. Because they are the ones that yeah. use their police officer um, attached to them yeah. to punish people that did not finish their clothes on time. <laughs> It's them that use it to punish people that did not buy their recharge card the way yeah. they want it or did not buy their food yeah, the way they yeah. want it. So, yeah, <laughs> I I'll, understand them not I also not think it's, I also think it's naivety when s some Nigerians make the case when they try to defend P2B in this instance or any other politician when they try to say, oh, the police is a federal organ and so governors don't have a say. And I point them to, number one, look at Governor Wike. When Governor Wike used the police to destroy his opponent's um, shops or whatever he, he, he did last year in River State, mm -hmm. that was a governor telling the police what to do. Mm -hmm. When I point them to Obaseke, current governor of Edo State, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't, I, well, probably he, he didn't know what he was doing when he said this, right? So if it, that was this audio. No, it was an, it was, he was speaking to some people. 
So him and Dipsy Governor currently they're, they're having an issue, right? Mm. So he was telling the, these, these people that, I'm, par I'm, paraf I'm paraphrasing now, he, knew, he knows what, he, he, he knew what his Dipsy Governor was saying to someone on, on a phone call. And he said himself that he's the CSO of the state. He's the chief security officer of a new state. That he knows what, or what, um, what's his name? The Sheriff Deputy, Philip. Yeah, Philip. That he knows what Philip was saying to someone on a phone call. So how did you know? So it's either you, you have intelligence, you have the DSS telling you, so, or you have the, or you have the police. So but my, but my point is, my point is, <laughs> governors, they always, they always hide under this exactly. facade so, of... They remember the constitution and, and the constitutions um, um, and, the, and their constitutional rights yeah. and, and lack of rights when it comes to doing the right thing. Yeah. They now know how due process works. Oh, I cannot control it's the a police. It's a federal whatever. But you can say you don't want a CP in your state and they will remove exactly, it. For you, exactly. For you. And that is not you controlling it. And so you use the police to rig elections exactly. when it suits you. Yeah, when it suits you. So it's a, it's a convenient excuse, right? It's a convenient excuse. But me, I'm, I, I give people, even though, like, even if this is the best, this is the truth, you don't control the police and all, the attorney general of a state is under the control of the governor of the state. He chooses the attorney general of the state. You can ask the attorney general to open an investigation into a, a police officer, right? Mm. Into the Nigerian police, even. And you are suing federal government and Nigerian police for a crime that is committed against a citizen of your state. So all these stories about not being able to, no, it's just not wanting to act, right? So it's convenient. Yeah. And let me tell you, Nigerian politicians are very, very intelligent. Of they course, yeah. know yeah. the right thing to do. Of course. They know when to do the right thing. Mm. They just do not want to yeah. do it. Yeah. So yeah, I wish them all the best. But for me, they would, I would keep on asking until someday they yeah. will be shamed enough to do the right and to take actions. Yeah. So ever since this has happened now, 11 years going on, has either Peter B, Obiano, or Saludo reached out to you personally? No. Have they called your, your parents? No. They have never talked to my family or anybody in my family, anybody related to my family at all. Not Soludo, not Obiano, not Pitovi. Especially Obiano, because Obiano was the governor when NSAS happened. Obiano was the governor that, uh, that employed James Swan for. So when they yeah. told yeah, you. Yeah, as, yeah, as, as the SA, 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 SA security. security yes, and yeah. when you found out that this person you employed is a deadly criminal, a killer cop that has killed so many people in your state, you didn't think that it is necessary to reach out to the families of the bereaved and at least commiserate with us, not just my family. I said there are about 120 cases and about 100 of them were indicting James Mafo. He could have just called for a press conference even and say sorry to us for having to live with the terror that is James Mafo and having to bear him as his essay. Our tax used to pay a man that had killed and taken away from us. Yes, he should have apologized for it, but he didn't think that it was necessary. And so he walked away. And like you said, on our, on our way here, he's still currently in Anambra State. James Wampo is a free man walking around Anambra State, living his death. He tells anybody that cares to listen that nothing will happen.